so this class is uh, about totals and how to group data in our continuation of uh, elementary SQL or like introduction to SQL so let's start so up until now we have seen like the results that uh, SQL returns as a result of the select statements or any statement or query uh, for that matter is uh, the records are not sorted at all right so um, uh, the way usually like when the records were entered in the database they are returned as is but in some compilers in some softwares uh, it's a totally random process it may not necessarily be like how the records were entered uh, they are stored in whichever way when the query goes one time the uh, query return might be different uh, the other time the query re uh, result that's returned may be different uh, as well so um, an example is like when you run a query like this select all from this customer table where some condition so you can get the results in um, a random order and although like currently we are seeing that these customer IDs are uh, written in a sequential manner it may not necessarily be the way that they are returned every time. Uh, it, in this case, it seems that the records were entered like uh, 1001 was entered first, then this two, and so on, right? Um, but if, let's say, we want to sort the result based on some other attribute, right? Uh, so. For instance, like if we say that we need to uh, sort the results that we get in this previous slide, but this time sort them by their area code, right, instead of the customer IDs. So how can we do that? So for that, uh, there is this clause called order by, which is usually written uh, with a where like where this condition and then you say that once you get the results order them by some attribute or a group of attributes okay so order by customer area code and this is you can see like the area codes are um, ordered in this case okay uh, so basically order by is the keyword that you use and then you write the attribute by which you want to order the results. Then you can also say whether the results that are entered are returned in an ascending or a descending order by the keywords ASC or DESC. Okay. For instance, in this query, we are saying that uh, customers uh, whose ID is greater than 1000 get them, get that result and then order them uh, the area codes in an in ascending order and phone numbers in a descending order okay so that's the uh, result of this query that we said that order by area code in ascending order and then customer phone number should be descending then just like any sql query when the results are returned uh, uh, even in order by or uh, any other query if you want to eliminate duplicates as we have seen earlier you use the distinct keyword right uh, so you can just write select distinct last names and instead of like last names being repeated in a normal query for instance this uh, the first last name Vescas is not going to be repeated in this uh, version of the result okay if you say distinct that's like elementary we've seen that earlier so the next thing uh, we're gonna see is aggregate operators we have seen some of these earlier the others just to show you like there are a number of aggregate operators that you can use if you need to count something you say count star like count everything if you want to count 
some uh, attribute or column you can name those as well and again the keyword distinct if there are uh, multiple versions of those uh, or that multiple versions of records in a single column having the distinct keyword will eliminate them and count them only once similarly sum average find the minimum of a column maximum of a column so you can have these again and again um, we can apply these on numerical attributes you cannot apply them these on var char or other types of attributes okay so for instance the query example that's given here is count the number of sailors assuming that there's a sailors table uh, so you can just say count star and that will count all the records if there are 10,000 records in that table uh, the result of this query will be 10,000 okay So these again these produce numbers um, not uh, rows of data these all functions these numeric functions will generate or uh, produce a single number okay it will give you the sum average count min max so these produce a single number um, so in the simplest uh, way to use a count is for instance uh, would be to return a single field that returns the count of something similarly this query down here you can see that to find the max of a given column from a given table can be written something like this right in this case it makes sense if we want to find which uh, employee is paid the highest uh, we can uh, write this query okay in this manner So in counting, like you, you can't use, uh, or I shouldn't say can't. You, apart from using is an asterisk, you can use other things as well. Okay. So when we say count expression, so expression can be a single numeric field, or it can be a formula in itself. Okay. Uh, So let's uh, assume we have this uh, table given to us, right? Or this is like the actual data in our uh, table that is. Now let's look at this query. So what will be the result of this query? So count the supplier ID. So how many records are there? One, two, three. So the answer of this query is three. Now, on the other hand, look at state, right? So state has only one record or one row has a record in it. The other two are empty. So the count function does not return uh, null values, right? So since only one state has a not null value, so the answer of this query is one. So so just remember that if you have missing records or if you have no uh, or like a null record in a row that row is not included in the count okay so here we are saying like how many employees have a salary that is above $25,000 okay but what are we doing here we are saying select count distinct department as unique department so as all you know, all know is when the result is returned this will be the name of the uh, column okay so where whatever condition so select count distinct department so if the departments are repeated we don't uh, want that we only want departments to be counted once and when you get the count write it in the uh, under this uh, column okay from employees where salary is greater than 25,000 
So how many employees have a salary that is above $25,000 per year, for instance? So that is uh, this query, essentially. This query, so let's read this. So select sum of the salary as this, wherever. So this is pretty easy. So what we are trying to find is the combined total salary of all the employees whose salary is more than 25,000, right? Uh, how different is this second query then? So just think about it, like select sum of distinct salary as this from employees where salary. So the only difference is distinct salary here. In the first case, we're getting the combined total salary of all employees whose uh, salary is above 25,000. In the second case, we're getting the word distinct, meaning that if there were, let's say, two salaries of $30,000 a year, only one of those will be counted in the sum function. Okay? Let's look at some other examples. Uh, so given this schema, find the average age of sailors with rating 10. So try to solve this. Pause the video, try to solve this and see if you can uh, solve it. Pretty straightforward. Just say average of uh, the age attribute from this table where whatever the condition was given, right? Then count the number of different sailor names. So you have to go over the names and since it's different, you will use distinct and you're counting, so it's a count. So count distinct names or S name in this case. So count distinct S name, okay? Find the age of the oldest sailor. So, oldest is maximum age. So it's a pretty straightforward. Select max age. Right? On the other hand, if you are saying find the name and age of the oldest sailor, you cannot do this. This is illegal. This is not allowed. Can you think of a reason why? So the answer is because you cannot combine a single value with a column type of result. Okay? Because this is returned as a record. This is returned as a single number. Okay? So what's the best way to write this same query? something like this, that you find first the name and the age. Say, give me the name and age, but in the where condition, you put that condition on age, that where this age that you're going to throw out is, etc., etc. So in there, you put the max age limit. So from here, a number is thrown. So where age equals a given or a single number. And then, this returns a uh, record or a row of data. So this, the max query returns a single number that cannot be output in conjunction with a record, okay? So that is an important point to remember. Now in uh, our queries up until now we've seen like this aggregate operator that's applied to all the tuples, right? Or all the rows of data. What if we want uh, something else as a to apply to some groups of tuples? So sailors, so let's look at the schema. Uh, where is the schema? Uh,
yeah, rating. So this attribute is, let's say there are uh, rating levels. So each sailor has uh, an ID, name, age, and they have some rating, uh, like rating of good, bad, worse, or like one, two, three, whatever the rating is, right? So you want to find the age of youngest sailor, meaning the minimum age for each rating level. Now it's not only one record that we're looking for. If there are like five rate, different rating levels, we want our R result should have uh, five of those, right? Um, or like the youngest sailor for each of those uh, levels, that is. So how do you do that? Um, if we know the, the number of levels beforehand, we can write something like this, like a loop. Remember, like in, in programming languages, you can write loops. So if we know that it's for 1 to 10, then we can just write something like this, right? where each rating level is an I, and you can put this in a loop kind of structure in uh, your application. However, we don't know how many rating levels exist beforehand, right? So you are just querying the database. You don't know how many records or different levels exist. Then how do you do that? You can't write a loop. You can't write a while or a for loop because you don't know how many levels exist, right? So for these kind of situations, there is a new um, construct called group by. So you can group by across uh and I'd like an inner example across different rating levels okay so group by is basically the clause uh, that can be used in a select statement to collect data across multiple records and then group the results by one or more columns for example so we select a number of columns right so expression one two up till n are expressions that are not encapsulated within an aggregate function and must be included in the group by clause. So if you have, let's say, three attributes up here, like shown in the select, those same should be down here in the uh, group by uh, condition. Okay, so these expressions, expression one to n, so these are columns or attribute names that are not encapsulated inside this aggregate function, okay? If the aggregate function is running over, let's say, uh, age, the name of the sailor, the ID, etc. so they are not inside this aggregate function. So then these attributes that are not the aggregate function should be in the group by, okay? And we will see examples, then it will become more clear. So this is just like a graphical depiction of how it, it works, how the process works. So first, like the uh, uh, records are grouped according to like those, uh, the condition, uh, like in the group by list condition, and they all agree on those attributes. Uh, and then out of those, you can find aggregates for each of those rows. So first, out of these, like the whole uh, data set, the groups, um, uh, like you only get those attributes that are in the group by list, then all rows that agree on a group, they become part of a group. And then if there's an uh, aggregate query, then it's run on each of those groups. So this one group aggregate query returns this one row. These 15 rows, when the aggregate query returns, it will return a single row and so on, okay? So each row then will describe a single group based on that aggregate function, okay? So let's look at an example. So remember our, our query, find the age of the youngest sailor for each rating level, right? So we said, again, min age to find the youngest sailor from each rating level. Hence, we say group by the rating or rating level. So here we have how many rating levels? Three. 
which is 3, 7, and 8. So these are three rating levels. Out of these, find the minimum age for each one of those. So since age is included here, the other attribute is not included here. And then the same attribute is in the group by condition. So that's what this was saying. Okay. So if you have an attribute in written in the select, uh, then that same attribute goes in the group by. Okay, so what's the result? So first what happens is out of this, uh, they are grouped together or like they're not, they're not physical results virtually. Like this is what the compiler is doing. That's what the sync, uh, in, uh, seek, SQL interpreter is doing, it goes in the database. It says, okay, I found a record for rating three. I found another one, it just puts them together, groups them together, okay? Then the next step is for each of those that aggregate is applied on each group. So aggregate was find the minimum age. So out of 25, 63, it says this, this one has no conflict. So the same record comes and so on. Okay, so that's how this group by works. So first it makes these groupings. Out of these groupings, it applies the uh, grouping function. So let's look at this example. So let's say you have uh, like a schema, I think I show you in one of the coming slides, uh, but let's say you have a transcript table with these uh, attributes and uh, you want, want to find the average grade and the number of courses, okay? So student IDs, average grade, to count the number of courses, you say count of, like count everything. Like here, if it's four records, it'll come like this. If it's five, count comes as five and so on, okay? And again, since it's not in these, uh, Aggregate queries, this attribute, it should be down in the group by, same attribute or same list of attributes, okay? So once uh, we have uh, uh, grouped the data, then further we can uh, like filter it. What are, we have seen until now is uh, this type of a query. Where let's say we are, what we are saying is that show the maximum retail price of each category uh, that is greater than 150. For instance, that is our query. So now we have already grouped it based on this aggregate operator called max of the price. Then what we are saying is that max price should be greater than 150. So either you can use this comparison operator up here, like when you do the aggregate, or you can use it inside the where clause that we've been doing up until now. So up until now, you haven't seen this group by it. So the only addition to that clause is that you say then group by each category, right? Another way of doing the same thing is with something called the having clause. So having basically is uh, added or is in addition to group by where you say that when you're grouping these items have this condition or apply this condition on this aggregate function okay so look at this thing up here so here whatever you're aggregating here right so you can use uh, a condition on the same operator down here okay or the, sorry, the same column down here, okay? Uh, example is something like this. So for the same query, instead of writing in select up here, uh, the max price is greater than 150 or inside here, we can say having the same thing that's in the aggregate operator up here, greater than 150, okay? So this is more appropriate than this will give you a better result than these queries, okay? Uh, so let's look at uh, another example here. So this is our schema. 
given up here these are tables student table professor table and so on okay um, so what we're going to use is the having clause why because it's used uh, like I said with the group by to restrict the groups of return rows to only those in which a given condition is true okay so what are we saying in our query so we are saying select the student ID the average of the grade like whatever the transcript grade is right as like cumulative GPA CGPA and count the number of credits from this table where course code is like and uh, CS something like for computer science students that is group by each student having average grade is greater than 3.5 so essentially we're looking for students whose GPA is greater than 3.5 find their cumulative GPA and uh, the number of credits that they have taken right in courses related to computer science so that is essentially what this uh, query is saying so and you can see that this having operator how we have used this inside uh, this group by condition or in conjunction with group by okay Another example, uh, so here we are saying that return the name of the department and the total sales in that associated department. Okay, so this SQL having clause down here will filter the results so that uh, only those departments where the sales are greater than 1000 can be returned or will be returned, right? then in this query so what are we doing here so pause and think what this query means okay so this essentially means that return the name of a department when we just select department essentially like getting the department name uh, and the number of employees they count the number of employees in the employee table that make more than $25,000 let's say a year and then uh, group by each department having the count greater than 10 so count greater than 10 of what number of employees so this having clause essentially returns or filter the results so that only those departments uh, where more than 10 employees are housed only return those uh, records okay uh, another example just the, the sailor example that we saw earlier so we're just extending extending that example so in this example what are we saying so we are saying that find the age of the youngest sailor for each rating level we've already seen that in the group by and the condition is that has at least two members so in essence don't get this uh, record with 745 because three and eight these rating levels have at least two members right so eliminate, eliminate groups that have, have less than two so this was our base query then we did what group by uh, rating right and then having what simple count greater than two or count star greater than two or at least uh, two, at least two sorry not more than two at least two is greater than one so it will be uh, two and more right or you can just say greater than or equal to two okay so this essentially um, lists uh, like where those attributes etc should go uh, basically like rules uh, which attributes should be where included where 
So for instance, when we say select target list. So in the target list, if you remember, we can have attributes or their aggregates, right? So this target list can only contain attributes, different column names or aggregates on a column, let's say, or a set of columns. Then uh, the attributes that are up here in the target list they need to be or they must be in the group by okay unless they are an aggregate so anything that's an aggregate can be avoided here but if it's not an aggregate and it's up here it should be down here in grouping list as well okay and then what comes in the having what types of attributes come here so here these same attributes that you group by and essentially they're coming from up here from the select they should be here or they can be an argument to an aggregate function from this target list up here so an argument to an aggregate function so aggregate is let's say a, a minimum of age so you can just here say having age greater than 40 so the same uh, argument to this aggregate function should be uh, can be down here okay and this is just like the same graphical description that I showed you earlier so you select from where will get you this type of query when you do group by it divides that query result into separate groups out of these uh, you say having some condition so some groups may be eliminated you get down with this and then finally on these uh, you can apply the aggregate functions. So that's how usually the query is evaluated in the SQL language. It starts from the empty database, coming to the query result, it passes through these steps in these order or in this uh, specific order uh, process. Okay. So let's just look at a few examples given are if you remember uh, the schema that I showed you earlier in one of the slides regarding uh, what's that uh, like a university database with students and professors taking classes in the transcripts and so on so output the name and ID of all seniors on the Dean's list so names and IDs. So up here it says select name and ID. So if you remember these are up here, so they should be both in the group by, right? So they should both be down here in the group by. Okay. Where this, this, this condition having, uh, so Dean's list is uh, greater than 3.5 GPA and, um, like number of credits greater than 90 so this alone is wrong this query is right why because every attribute that occurs in the select needs to be down in the group by okay so I just wrote this on the slide so you guys remember then Next query, uh, so again, order by we've already seen. Uh, order by we only saw with the where clause, right? So the same order by you can push it down with. So first group by this, having this condition and order the results by descending cumulative GPA and or ascending student IDs, okay? So order by that we saw earlier can be used with this or group by and having clauses. Okay. Um, like this is uh, just uh, like a recap that this was the original one that we saw with the where and uh, essentially we can use order by in or with uh, group by and having condition. This is like uh, again showing you how the query gets evaluated. Just wrote them on a slide so you guys can read and review. 
Then uh, finally, there are different set operators. Um, that are or that can be used in uh, SQL if you need to get a union like if you remember set operators union is the union of these two and any intersections uh, are overlapped intersect is the same thing keep only those that are common and except is minus but this minus this is whatever remains so except is a minus intersect union um, you guys know from set theory minus also so how do we apply these um, union looks something like this that you get one part of the query another query though both returning uh, some columns uh, and then you can add union in between the only caveat is if you remember from set theory uh, like there are some operations in which uh, like sets have to be in certain orders in this case the condition that applies on the union operator is that both queries should return the same columns okay same column names um, or same number of columns returned by uh, each separate query and then you can unionize them okay union by default will remove uh, remove all the duplicates that are in the result so if there are three Washington states in the result you only see one of them because union by default will eliminate the repeating rows if you want to see every row in the union again the operator is union all that show all or union everything so then you can see the repeating records as well okay intersect well, there's a typo and except are not supported in mysql but you should remember or know the theoretical basis for these okay how you can use except and we will see examples of that in uh, like a couple of classes but for the sake of assignments homeworks exam you should know how these operators work uh, theoretically. A union you can run in MySQL as well, but I don't think you can run in except. You can try, but as far as I remember, I think uh, you can't. So the next uh, or the last thing is uh, sometimes you need to concatenate your strings in the results. And you can use the concat function. I think may you may, may have already used it in one of the labs or homework. Uh, but if not, concatenate or concat one string with another will result in uh, something like this. So here we are saying concatenate the customer's last name, which is again an attribute. I'll put a comma in between and put the first name as whatever you need want that column name to be displayed as then you complete the rest of the query so the original column names are like this up here Suzanne uh, Whiskas and you want to see it in this format so all you have to do is use the concat function and write it like this some other functions you can use now to get the date and time uppercase to lowercase and so on you guys can read these slides and see like if uh, we use any of these functions uh, in the exam or so on okay so that is basically all for uh, this lecture